If you're wondering what flooding is like in Houston, then tune in to this video. Hello, my friends, Katie Day with the Moving to Texas team at Real Broker here in Houston, Texas. As a real estate agent in Houston, my team helps families move into and around the greater Houston area. So today, what I wanna talk about is something that we get asked about a lot, and that is flooding. If you Google Houston, flooding is going to pop up and a ton of articles and videos and stories come up on flooding in Houston. So if you've had Houston on your radar for a while, then you've probably heard of Hurricane Harvey back in 2017. This was one of the biggest hurricanes that hit Texas in recent history, and it's been stated that it's the most powerful storm to hit Texas in 50 plus years. So with that being said, keep in mind that this was a historic storm and it isn't necessarily a regular occurrence. The city and surrounding areas got hit with anywhere between 25 to 40 inches of rain over a very short period of time. And Harris County Flood Control District stated that there were 1 trillion gallons of water that fell across Harris County over a four day period. This amount of water would cover Harris County's 1800 square miles with an average of 33 inches of water. More than two dozen rainfall gauges registered seven day readings topping 40 inches with a maximum rainfall of about 47.4 inches near Clear Creek at I-45. Harris County generally receives an annual rainfall of about 50 inches per year, and we received that much in just a few days. So again, unprecedented storms, but we are a low city with most of the city very close to sea level. And when it rains a lot, the streets do sometimes fill up with water. So since Harvey, the Harris County Flood Control District has done a lot to try to avoid situations like this in the future. They've done channel modifications to the bayous throughout Houston. This includes widening them and deepening them, um, reducing friction with water by removing like the woody vegetation and lining the channels as well. They also offered home buyouts. So this means that they purchase homes in flood prone areas and demolish them. Finally, there have been some additional stormwater detention basins added in areas that would help to alleviate above normal stormwater volumes. The city also has tightened up on regulations for both new construction on commercial and residential properties to ensure that there's proper drainage to support the new infrastructure. If you want to read more about the historic events that have occurred in the greater Houston area and the areas that were impacted, the best site to visit is the Harris County Flood Control District website at hcfcd.org as it has the most accurate information as to what happened and then what they've done to prevent issues in the future. All right, so I just know I laid out a bunch of information. So if you're still listening or watching, uh, and if you're still thinking about maybe moving to Houston, let's talk about what you should know if you're buying a house. So the first thing is that in Texas, there is a seller's disclosure. The Texas seller's disclosure was most recently updated in 2019, where they added a more detailed section about flooding. Every seller is supposed to fill this out for a property when they are selling it. So the disclosure states if the seller of the property has current flood insurance, if the property has previously flooded due to a failure or breach of a reservoir or emergency release of a reservoir, um, if there was previous flooding due to a natural flood event, if there was any previous water penetration into the structure, and finally, if the property is located wholly or partly in a 100 or 500 year floodplain, flood way, flood pool, or reservoir. It also has a section where they disclose if they have filed any insurance claims due to flooding issues. So I know I just said a ton of stuff that probably seems like a foreign language. Sorry about that. But the best site to go to in order to check out different areas is the FEMA site, um, or more specifically for the city of Houston, harriscountyfemt.org. This will break down the different things that I just went over. So one thing to keep in mind is that a 100 year or 500 year floodplain doesn't mean that the property is only going to flood once in 100 or 500 years. But what it means is the probability of a flooding event to occur. So for example, the 100 year floodplain is a 1% floodplain. So it's an area at risk for flooding from a bayou creek or you know other waterway during a 1% flood. So structures located in that 1% have a minimum 1% chance of flooding in any given year and a minimum 26% uh, chance of flooding during a 30 year period of time. A 0.2% floodplain is the 500 year floodplain, and that's an area that's at risk from flooding during a 0.2% flood. 
So structures that are located in that 500 year 0.2% floodplain have a minimum of a 0.2% chance of flooding in any given year and a minimum 6% chance of flooding during a 30 year period of time. So again, not 100 or, or 500 years, it's that percentage chance. So the second thing that we tell all of our clients is that they should consider getting flood insurance. Before we get too far into this, I'll remind you I'm not an insurance provider, but we do have some great insurance providers that we work with if you are in need of homeowner's insurance or flood insurance. So those are two separate things and we'll dig into that a little bit. But if you are outside of a special flood hazard area, flood insurance is generally not required. You can purchase it for around $500 a year and have some basic coverage over your structure, right? If you're on a floodway or floodplain, flood insurance is normally required by your lender if you're financing a property. So if the property has flooded previously, insurance will go up from that $500 a year. Something that could impact your flood insurance cost and actually sometimes make it a little bit less would be an elevation certificate. So this is an official record that certifies the elevation of the lowest finished floor in relation to base flood elevation. So how high your house is and could possibly help you to have lower flood insurance if the property is raised up in some way. So flood insurance can be pricey, but keep in mind that damage from flooding is not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy. So again, separate policies, homeowners and flood. So that separate flood insurance policy must be purchased to cover damages from flooding for your contents and the structure. And it's, in my opinion, well worth it in case something happens. So I hope this helps. As a reminder, if you are looking at properties, request to see the seller's disclosure. If flooding is a concern to you, you need to let us know before we start to look at properties so we can ensure we are checking to see if it has flooded or if there have been any issues for flooding for the property in the past. And if you're purchasing, we do recommend you get flood insurance. So if you're considering moving to Houston, I hope this video helps to break down flooding in the area. If you liked this video, subscribe to learn more about what it's like to live here in Houston. And if you're looking to move to Houston, give us a call today. Again, my name is Katie Day and I'll talk to you soon.